the last part of chapter 14 we define how to multiply vectors together and there are two ways of doing this there's the scalar or dot product and the vector or cross product the dot product the result of it is as it implies it's a scalar it's a number the way we get that number is we take the x components multiply them together the y components multiply them together and any other corresponding pairs of values from the vectors multiply them all together and then add things up and this formula for cosine theta can be derived from the law of cosines but what it says is we can take the dot product of a and b and divide that by the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b and that will tell us what the cosine of the angle between the two vectors is. And the question here is if a dot b is equal to zero what does that mean? Well that would mean that the cosine of our angle is equal to zero over something where does the cosine of an angle equal zero at 90 degrees at pi over two radians. So if the dot product is zero, we know that the vectors are perpendicular. So let's find a dot b. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can come up with this dot product. So we take 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 0 plus negative 1 times 2 so the dot product is negative 4. We could use this number to help us find the angle between these two vectors as we're going to do in the next example but we know that these two vectors are not perpendicular. So here we have two linear equations. We want to know what the measure of the angle between them is. And when we talk about the angle between two lines or two vectors, we always refer to the acute angle, just as a standard convention. Because if I have one vector here and one vector there, Well, we could be referring to that angle, this angle, that angle. How are these vectors lined up? Is it this one here? Is it that one there? So we always just refer to the acute angle, just so that we're all on the same page. In order to find the angle between these two lines, we need to find what direction they're pointing, i.e. what their slope is. The first equation we can put in a slope intercept form and it reads negative 2x plus 5. The direction of that line, I'll call it d1, would be 1, negative 2. The slope, the rise over the run, the change of y over the change of x. So change of x is 1 change of y is negative 2. That's the direction the line is going. The second line can be written as y equals 3 halves x minus 4. The direction of that line, its direction vector, can be given as 2, 3. So to find the angle between them, we're going to take d1 dot d2 over the magnitude of d1 times the magnitude of d2. The dot product is negative 4. The two magnitudes our square root of 5 and square root of 13. When we take the inverse cosine of that,
we get approximately 119.7. But again, we're going to go with the acute measure. So we're going to say that theta is 180 minus 119.7, which is approximately 60.3 degrees. One thing that we could do here to alleviate this subtracting from 180, we could take the absolute value of the dot product, which would turn this into positive 4, and jump us right there right off the bat. The vector product, or cross product, uses the notation of old school multiplication symbol. That's why it's called the cross product. But it's telling us that we're going to get a vector as the result of, of multiplying these two vectors together. And what, the way we can do it, one way we can do it, is by arranging the two vectors into two rows of a 3x3 three three matrix. The first row of this matrix gets the unit vectors i, j, and k. And we're going to take the determinant of this now. So using the definition of determinant, we take the i times the determinant of the other two bottom rows. Minus j times the determinant of the other two bottom rows. plus k times the determinant of the other two bottom rows. And we'll get a vector at the end here like 3i minus 2j plus 5k. That's why we call it the vector product. And what the vector product is always going to find us is it's always going to find us a vector that is perpendicular to a and b. So we want to find a vector that's perpendicular to the plane containing these three points. If I can find two vectors in the plane, I can take their cross product, and that will give me the perpendicular vector to those two. So vector AB, it doesn't matter which pair of points we use would be 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 3, negative 5, AB cross AC what would be found by taking this matrix determinant And in doing that, why don't you, well, before I put the answer up here, why don't you give it a try? Pause the video, find this determinant. You should have ended up with negative 4i plus 14j plus 10k. So a vector that's perpendicular to the plane would be negative 4, 14, and 10. And one thing to consider here is there's actually infinitely many perpendicular vectors. We could have any non-zero multiple of the vector 2, negative 7, 5. Notice all three of these a negative 2 could be factored out of. So any non-zero multiple of this would technically be a right answer. Now we know that the area of a triangle is 1 half AB sine theta.
we can relate this to vector ideas too. The cross product can also be found by taking the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of theta should say the magnitude of this the magnitude of the cross product is that and because of that notice the similarity here the area of a triangle defined by vector a and vector b can be found by taking one half times the magnitude of our cross product the derivation for this up here can be found in your textbook. These vector ideas you need to become quite proficient with. As we move into the next two chapters, they're going to be founded in vector skills.